Welcome to the map Forts of Aizen in BFME 1 on the page 2.22 for a video commentary between good and evil. Between the yellow Gondor player Top G versus the pink Isengard player Boltwin the Fort. Uruk Pit Furnace opening into a slaughterhouse uh, right next to the base. And he's gonna march forward to capture also this one over there. In the meantime, the soldiers of Gondor are rotating from the top side. But they might get bitten here by the Vork a little bit. Yeah, one little laugh tap. And the Hobbit, in the meantime, will be capturing these farms outside. Right? That's the plan. Obviously, he was going for the uh, Postangi to get to this spot a bit faster. And also, Blacksmith Farm opening versus Uruk Pit Furnace opening. There comes the Alvin Wood. But it's going to be a 2v2 situation. The Uruks are quite tanky though. They might be able to stall this out before the before the third Uruk will arrive. I mean, obviously it's good for both the factions player right now. Aizen is preventing his opponent from taking down the structure. But also Gondor is preventing his opponent from getting to his own settlements and taking down his own farms, you know? And obviously also he can go for the creep. But he's gonna do that anyway with the Uruk number 3. He's gonna rush immediately forward to this farm over there. And he's gonna be, you know, get more and more Uruks upon the field every few seconds without any problems. No stable up yet. And the soldiers, they know. Whenever they will commit to this structure, the Uruks will hit them from behind and eventually he might be able to take it down. But the Uruks will then be free to do whatever they want, you know. Good positioning and not really because some of them are attacking the structure. And only a few of them are attacking the Uruks. However, on the land, the soldiers are very strong. They have the shield wall formation plus the Alvin Wood armor bonus. In the meantime, the Hobbit is trying to prevent Uruks from destroying this farm, but he can't do much. The farm is going to go down. The stable up on the field. The first knight is going to be recruited for 680. But I'm assuming the second knight will be already a bit more expensive because one farm is going to be taken down. That means less food bonus. And all of a sudden, the night will cost 720. Like, all of these resources, what I was just mentioning, are not super effective in the lead game. The 40 or 50 resource differential in the lead game when you have a full base doesn't really add too much value. But at the beginning of the game, even 20 is a lot, you know? Okay, the soldiers will go down. There is no safe. The Uruk base is looking amazing. We have four furnaces without any economical damage received from the enemy player on the slaughterhouses the knights are going for the trample but the pikemen already out on the field just like that what a timing could read his opponent like a book the soldier are actually still alive I, I lied okay and this soldier if he being kept alive can add so much value when he gets level two turn and fight the uruks Oh, level 2, that's so good actually for Gondor. In the meantime, also the farm number 2 has been taken down, by the way. And all of that has to be recaptured by Gondor. And he has not a very look good looking base. Went for 2, immediately a third knight. He knows he needs he needs the speed. He needs to be multitasking in order to win this. Because of the great start into the game from the Isengard player, Boltwin. The soldier will respawn over time. That's a special effect. Passive ab ability for every unit in the game. When they get level 2, they spawn the banner. And the banner will kind of kind of act like a captain. But also, when you don't fight for a long duration, they will respawn over time. But unfortunately for him, the Isengard player didn't give him any time to respawn. And the Berserker was able to deal with the Uruks. Uh, with the... Oh, be careful. With the soldiers. Beautiful. Okay, so what's the plan? The plan is to creep, to get power points for Gondor, to summon the Great Company. In order to do that, you need to collect in total three power points after the Elven Wood. So he still needs one and a half power points. And each creep gives you around about a quarter. So you need like three, four-ish creep to get a full power point. But during your journey to do that, you of course will kill some workers, some berserkers, maybe some pikemen even. So it's gonna be there. In, you know, almost, in almost every game you unlock that. The, t the question is not if you unlock it. The question is more like when do you unlock it. 
because timing is extremely important in this game it's a fast paced game and when you unlock it very late when your opponent is already the best answer to that he has warx with upgrades or Sharku, or uh, has lots of pikemen but they have heavy armor then it's not going to be that valuable anymore so you need the barracks eventually if you want to be able to compete for the map control he went for the um he got the money with the hobbit but he has no upgrades yet he just got the forge blades purchased from the blacksmith level 2 hobbit is going to be taken down and the third knight is trying to put some pressure by killing the workers but there are always some pikemen just in the right spot preventing from oh wait a second the wargs have respawned actually we have all that's gonna be one of the last remaining creeps after this one and also this will be taken by eisen so eisen was able to get two power points on top of the industry that's quite impressive he can even go for a for a hindered land to co uh, to cover the enemy land when it's gonna be ready for a, for a third time um this creep is gonna be taken by gondor though he's hard focusing the creep and that's gonna bring him super close to the summon of the great company he will get it he got it and i believe the first summon has to be done to get the map control back into your hands he killed the pikeman on the land with heavy armor every time with forge bleeds it's possible charku oh my god that's gonna be kind of a little bit annoying charku is like a great counter to the knights of gondor but i think he missed him with the palantir i don't even see the animation of the palantir on him it looks like he missed charku and that's why he wasn't able to catch up to them charku when you when he catch up to you he's gonna hurt you know full map control for aizen that's a very scary thing to see super scary thing to see actually only one farm for gondor all the other settlements have been controlled are, are controlled by aizen land but i think aizen can cover this easily he's gonna not have the power points he's gonna use the Palant uh, war chant but on the on the wood on the alvin wood it doesn't really work like this and the knights with full upgrades are able to take down the pikemen on the wood that's pretty good eisen has now the land on him uh, on his own hands he can cover this land or potentially this land or this land but what you can also do is place another land a brand new land right next to the base of your opponent or next to your own base for example in front of your own uruk pit because the uruk pit you need to know is going to be always the primary target from your opponent so using the attainted land in front of your own base will make your units deal more damage or be more tanky while they are fighting in front of the uruk pit great company has been summoned um Charco doesn't want to commit to this. You need to split the rangers, send them to the bottom, to the middle, to the top, to clear as many settlements as you potentially can. Eisen is controlling the whole game as we are talking. And Gondor has to hope for a for a small uh, for a slow play. He's gonna use the sword, which will make them immune to trample. But Charco already got level three. He has now the leadership unlock for the Vorks. And they will receive more armor while they are fighting next to their captain. Oh, they have fort bleeds though. That's a different situation. Be careful. Oh my god. Or oh, the banner. But now the Sharku is with the steroids. He's running at light speed. Can he spawn? No, he couldn't catch him just in time okay so you know losing units is going to be a bad thing for gondor but i'm assuming he lost already one of his gondor now nah, he didn't lose any of them actually they are respawning good micro from gondor i like it each level will make your knight stronger and stronger and stronger and give you a chance to fight the pikemen just like that in the middle range because he didn't put the formation but when they ever get whenever get the, the forge bleeds it's going to be a different situation Aizen is paying attention microing his uh, pikemen very nicely and punishing gondor gondor could can't farm any power points he's you know saving up for gandalf but he's gonna steve gray for a long time you need two power points he only has one and without the white spell, Gandalf is not going to add too much to the table. 
he's gonna be actually one of the water heroes you know that's kind of ironic because of the power point is making him so much stronger his powers are dealing more damage they recharge way faster you know and of course he will get the chance to use the easter light while he's white he can't do that when he's gray and also he will get more health when you pick up the power point so like so many buffs for Gandalf just because of the two power point investment but Aizen is the controller of the map land will be used Aizen didn't cover any land yet he's gonna cover the land actually now nah, he's gonna put the land right in front of the bees because he knows even on the land when you are pikemen are level 3 and they have forge bleeds it's super difficult for Gondor to fight and to win this and what Gondor has to do eventually is to go for the infantry strategy, you know? Go for the for, go for the for the combos between soldiers and tower guards, for example. Without that, it's quite difficult. Also, what I need to mention is super important info. Aizen is the on host player in this game, so kind of making it even harder for Gondor to play this. And still impressive stuff from Top G, you know, that he can play this well with his knights even off host. Gandalf the Grey has been recruited. Oh my god. Oh my god. Be careful. He couldn't even kill him because his abilities are not dealing damage, but the blast should be able to finish him off. Yeah. Does he have the power points yet? Nope, he doesn't. The level 5 knight was barely able to survive, but, you know, Gandalf the Pleb, look, his powers have such a long cooldown now, you know? One farm versus the world, and the Rams are coming. That's how you want to play against Gondor in 2024. Now, play aggressive. Most people play defensively. Um, but you see what this Eisen did. Camping with the two Uruks, preventing his opponent to destroy the settlement. When you play evil faction, does it doesn't matter if it's Eisen or Mordor. The early game is the most important thing for you, you know? You keeping your settlements alive versus you losing them it's gonna make such a massive difference and you don't want to do this you don't want to lose that and Gondor is gonna try to hold this but the army looks scary we have Lourdes up on the field level one here's the cripple to stop Gandalf from doing anything uh, but the uh, ram is gonna be taken down because you know melee siege not very powerful close the gate never mind oh again after white finally look Gives you more health, more damage, and also recharge twice as quickly. So from one minute, we have, you have seen before, it's gonna drop down to 30 seconds. And also, on a ability like this, it's massive. This has around four minutes when you are grey. Four minutes. It's a very long time, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so Siege will now be a ranged one. Ballista will be recruited. Oh, looks like Sharko has been getting killed by the Grey Company. That's very good for Gondor. Maybe we can turn this game around. That would be one of the greatest comebacks. Rising is being everywhere. Level 6 Knights. But you see what, he, what he's doing? He's always kind of scouting this area to keep crushing the enemy siege weapons. That will buy him so much more time. Be careful. Nice micro. They are quite tanky with the shields against fire arrows. No problem for the Knights of Gondor. And Ganaf is looking for some power point, you know? He's running around the map and that's the main strength of the White Wizard. Farming power points for you. Uh oh. Oh, now he doesn't want to heal him. Two more ballista are coming. But now he needs to babysit the ballista to the base of his opponent. So his army has to kind of hold hands with the ballista. Otherwise, this player will keep destroying them over and over again. He's trying again to get into the location. But here, there are too many units. They are getting shot in the face. Lord's getting level 3. That's beautiful. And Gandalf can't really approach his army because of Lord's. If Lord cripples him, your Gand is dead. And also, this Aizen is being generous, you know? Still leaving one farm to his opponent. He's now level 3 farms, marketplace. So, Gondor. 
can get some money without map control, but you can see he's not very wealthy, you know? Oof, don't lose. Oh my god, that's painful. Uh, Nah. I mean, what a desk he knows. You know, he, know, he knows. When the. Nah, he knows. He needs to go for a risky play because once the gate is breached, there is no coming back. And what a clean performance from Aizen. Of course, him being on host. Uh, might makes it a bit or a lot easier for him, but also very well played, you know, dodging um, the knights, microing his pikemen and avoiding to give power points to his opponent and bringing the fight to them with the aggressive playstyle. Uh, Gondor didn't want to go for the barracks, didn't, go to, didn't want to go for the, for the soldier tower guard combination, that could be a great counter if you want to control the map, control uh, the whole map, because with horses all alone it will be quite difficult since all your opponent has to do is give upgrades to his pikemen and you cannot really win the fight anymore. But anyways, still a very great game between the top three players of the BFM1. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, leave a like, subscribe. See you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.